Hey guys, welcome back. We find ourselves right before a ladder reset, and you might find yourself thinking, how can I get rich when the ladder resets? Well, one thing you can do is farm torches. But in order to get to Uber Tristram, you need keys. Countess, Summoner, and Neolithak all drop the keys that you need, and of course Neolithak is the hardest. So I've decided to put together this video showcasing four builds on a budget that you can expect to achieve relatively quickly in a ladder to farm Neolithak with relative ease. When I say relative ease, Neolithak is still difficult and you still have to play well, but it's perfectly doable with these builds. Credit for this video goes to BT Neanderthal. If you guys don't know who he is, there'll be links below this video pointing you to his YouTube and his Twitch. He's a good friend of mine and I hope you hit him up with a sub on YouTube and a follow on Twitch. He's a good guy, very knowledgeable about the game, and he gave me the idea to put together a video farming Neolithak on a budget. I took it the extra step and decided to do four builds farming Neolithak on a budget. Hope you enjoy. So the first character we're going to look at is an assassin. Now I'm using my pluggy guys and all of my characters that I have available to me are above level 70. But I'm going to simulate that they're level 70 because I feel like that level is very achievable at the beginning of a ladder. And the way I'm going to simulate that they're level 70 is I'm going to only give them enough stats and skills as if they were level 70, having done all their quests in all three difficulties. That means Den of Evil, Radiment, Ijwal for all three difficulties, as well as the stats quest in Act 3 for all three difficulties, and all three Anya quests. So for my assassin, she's level 93. I've done the math, and with the amount of skill points and stat points available to her, she needs 23 skill points remaining and 100 stat points remaining in order to simulate that she's level 70. Every level you get past level 70 will make it that much easier for you. But I'm only going to invest enough stat and skill points as if she were level 70. So let's take a look at the build and we'll see how I recommend doing this character. Enough strength to equip your gear, of course. No dexterity. Well, actually you need one point in dexterity, but I'll get to that in a minute. And then everything else in vitality. You want as much life as possible. We're not going for max block on this build, so you don't need a lot of dexterity. The weapon is Rune Word Steel. The reason for this is it gives you 25 increased attack speed, which will help with laying traps. The reason I put it in a scimitar is because a scimitar gives you negative 20 base attack speed, which is the fastest you can get with relative ease. Yes, a phase blade is faster, but you can actually shop a scimitar from Act 2 in Normal that has two sockets. You can get it first day of ladder. You might not get a two socket phase blade first day of ladder. Tier L are extremely easy runes to get. You can farm Normal Countess for these runes. Literally the only reason for this is to increase your attack speed while laying traps. That way you don't have to use burst of speed and instead you can use fade. Gloves get some increased attack speed gloves. You can shop IAS gloves from vendors. I got these particular gloves from Geed in Hell. Now, you don't have to have lightning resist on them, although that will help, of course. The point here is to get some gloves with at least 10 IAS. Belt, use whatever you've got. I vendor shopped this, 22 cold res. It's not really that great of a belt, but this is supposed to be an extremely budget build. For shield, I'm using a rhyme. Shale F, these runes are very easy to find. You can farm countess for them. The main reason for this shield is cannot be frozen. If any of you have ever played a traps in, you know that getting frozen is horrible. It severely limits your laying trap speed and it sucks. So on this particular character, we're gonna go with a rhyme shield for cannot be frozen. Any two socket shield you can find. Armor is smoke, Nephilim. Again, very easy runes to get. The reason for this particular armor is it does give you FHR, which is pretty nice, but more importantly, it gives you 50 all res. You're gonna want your resistances to be as high as you can get when you're farming Neolithak. I'm not gonna use any charms because I'm doing it bare budget. You guys find some charms while leveling up that give you resistances or FHR or whatever, I suggest holding on to them, even if they're not that great. You can replace them with better charms later, but for now, day one of ladder, use whatever you can find leveling up. For helmet, lore, or Sol. These are very easy runes to get, once again, Nightmare Countess. The reason for this is the one to all skills, as well as the 30 lightning resist. This is a very nice leveling helm, whatever two socket helm you can find to make lore. The amulet, now this is a little bit more tricky, but still extremely doable day one of ladder. This is a prismatic amulet. You can make this in the cube. You need six perfect gems, one of each excluding a skull. 
it has a chance to roll between 16 and 20 all resistances. I made this yesterday and it happened to roll 20 all res, so that's pretty nice. But even if it rolls 16, that's still not a very big deal. Again, you need six perfect gems, excluding the skull, one of each perfect gem, and a magic amulet. Put it in the cube and you'll come back with a prismatic amulet. This is a great amulet to have early ladder because it's a really easy way to get some resistances. You can get your perfect gems from the Hellforge, from Farming Chaos, Lower Kerast, things like that. The reason you need one dexterity is to equip your scimitar. It requires 21 dexterity and as an assassin you start with 20. You might get dexterity elsewhere on your gear, maybe in charms or something like that, so you may not have to put any points in dex, but I had to to equip the scimitar. I want to demonstrate this prismatic amulet thing. You need one perfect gem of each type. Topaz, amethyst, sapphire, ruby, emerald, and diamond and a blue amulet. I just gambled this a second ago, and this is what I ended up with. So you put these seven items in the cube. You transmute it, and then you end up with the prismatic amulet. This one rolled 19. The first time I did it, it rolled 20. I definitely recommend doing this early on in the ladder. It's a great way to shore up resistances and fill in that amulet slot early on. Okay, so now we're going to talk skills for the assassin. The main way you're going to be killing in this build is with Death Sentry. The reason for that is that it does a corpse explosion effect. So the whole idea behind this build when farming Neolithak is to explode the corpses before he can. He does a corpse explosion as well and it's extremely powerful and it'll probably kill you if you get more than two or three corpses around you. So you use Death Sentry to shoot lightning, to generate corpses, and then Death Sentry will automatically prioritize corpse explosion, and hopefully it'll explode the corpses before Neolithak has a chance to. So you want to max Death Sentry, and because we're going to be killing with it initially with lightning damage, you also want to synergize Lightning Sentry for that purpose. So max Death Sentry, max Lightning Sentry. In here, you want to grab a point in Burst of Speed and one in Fade. With the amount of resistances that you have on your gear without fade one point is good enough and because of the lore that i'm wearing it brings it up to two with fade on you can see where my resistances are right now they're decent they're good enough to get the job done they're not amazing but hopefully yours will be better based on you having slightly better gear than i have charms and stuff like that you're not really going to be using burst of speed remember the burst of speed and fade will override each other so you pretty much want to pick one or the other what you can do is use Burst of Speed to get to the fight and then use Fade once you get there. I like to have a point in Mind Blast and Cloak of Shadows. I feel like they're very useful utility and survivability skills. So I like to have a point in each of those. They help out quite a bit. And then I've chosen to max Shadow Master. You might prefer Shadow Warrior over Master, but I like Master personally. She's kind of a fire and forget tank, and it's nice to have a tank when you're dealing with Neolithax so you don't get overwhelmed by his minions. No points in Martial Arts. So in summary, Max Death Sentry, Max Lightning Sentry, Max Shadow Master, and then one point in Mind Blast, one point in Cloak of Shadows, Fade, Burst of Speed. That's pretty much your build. Before farming Neolithak, I recommend chugging a few Antidote and Thawing Potions to shore up your Poison and Cold Resistances. The Antidotes are especially important because of the snakes that might spawn down there. You can see my, that my Neil attack is lightning immune, but that's okay because the corpse explosion part of my death sentry is actually going to do fire and physical damage, so I might still be able to kill him as long as I have enough corpses. And he died. He died right here. He didn't drop a key this time, but there you go. You can see how easy it is on a trap sim. All right, let's talk a paladin. Mine's level 90, but again, I'm going to be simulating that he's level 70 by having 85 stat points remaining as well as 20 skill points remaining. For my character, given how many stat and skill points he has available to him, I don't remember what quest he's done, to be honest with you, but I did the math, and this should simulate around a level 70 paladin. Let's talk stats first. Enough strength to equip your gear, enough dexterity to have max block, which is 75%, in hell with holy shield active everything else into vitality 
You don't have a whole lot of health, but you don't really need it. He'll be okay. Let's talk gear. Spirit in a four socket sword. Even if it rolls 25 FCR, that's okay, because with the gear that we have, we're still going to hit 75 FCR, which is the breakpoint that we want on a pally. You can do 125, but it's a little bit harder to do for a stay of ladder. 75 is very achievable. Whatever gloves you can find, preferably that have fire resist on them. I vendor shop these from Geed and Hell. 21 fire resist is really all we're after. As you can see, I still have negative fire resist, even with my gear on. Fire resist is really going to be my weak point in this build. Whatever belt you can find, this one has cold resist on it. It's really just to hold your potions. It doesn't matter. Whatever nice mods you can find. Again, this was a vendor shopped belt. If I were a little bit more patient, I probably could have found one that had fire resist on it instead of cold resist, but I didn't want to be patient. Boots, same thing. Find whatever you can. Once again, fire resist would be better than cold, but this is what I found from a vendor, so this is what I'm using. Now, because every pally shield in the game, starting in Nightmare, can roll up to four sockets, you can actually equip a spirit on a pally much sooner than a sorceress can. She's limited to a monarch, which can only drop in hell. So find a pally shield from Nightmare or Hell, and you can get four sockets on it. The reason I say a pally shield, is, of course, is because for one, you can equip them sooner, and for two, they oftentimes have max resistance on them. This one only rolled plus five max res, and I actually did that on purpose for this build to show you that you don't need an OP pally shield with 45 all res on it to farm meal of that day one of ladder. So make yourself a spirit. Again, this one rolled 25 FCR, which doesn't really matter that much because between my two spirits and this piece of gear, the stealth, I have 75 FCR, which is all I need. My helmet is once again lore, one of skills, 30 lightning resist, very nice early game helmet. The same prismatic amulet from the assassin. As you can see, his resistances are all positive except for fire, which should be fine. It shouldn't be a problem, but we'll see how it goes. For skills, basic hammered in setup. You want a max blessed hammer, one point in holy shield. I've actually opted to max the synergies for blessed hammer before I max concentration aura. And my reason for that is because fighting Neolithak, the main aura I'm going to be using is actually redemption aura. The reason for this is so that he cannot use corpse explosion. Redemption has a chance to redeem the bodies of corpses around you for health and mana, which means once they're redeemed, Neolithak cannot use corpse explosion. So for me personally, I'm going to be using Redemption Aura primarily during the fight. I'm probably not even going to swap to Concentration Aura at all. If you feel you can get away with swapping to Concentration Aura, by all means max that instead of maxing the Synergies first. Because you're going to get more damage by using Concentration Aura than you are maxing the Synergies. But for my purposes, at level 70, farming Neolithak, day one of ladder, I'm going to keep Redemption Aura up most of the time because it's safer. Therefore, I max the synergies for Blessed Hammer, which are Blessed Aim and Vigor. So 20 points in Blessed Aim, 20 points in Vigor. 20 points in Vigor is actually really nice for moving quicker anyway. One point in Redemption, this is going to be the primary aura I have active. This is just a basic hammered and build. All of the rest of my points that I had available at level 70 will get dumped into Concentration Aura. So in about 10 or so more levels, he'll be able to have max damage with Concentration Aura as a hammered in just from his skills alone. Here we go. As long as you play it safe and go slowly, you shouldn't have too much of a problem with them. Don't be afraid to save an exit if the mob spawns down there are just too bad for you to handle. All right, let's talk sorceress. Honestly, doing Neil attack on a sorceress at the beginning of the ladder is a little bit sketchy, but it's very doable. As always, we're simulating that this character is level 70. The way that this character needs to do that is having 21 skill points extra and 95 stat points remaining. So for stat points, enough strength for gear, no dexterity, and everything into vitality. Very simple. For gear, your goal for this build is to get to 63 FCR. However you do that is up to you. But an easy way to do that is with this build. Spear of Sword. Now, again, this one has 25 FCR on it. It might roll higher. If it rolls higher, you might not need some of these other items. Whatever gloves you have, preferably fire resist gloves. Again, I vendor shop these. In this build, I needed an FCR ring, so you're almost certain to find one while leveling up. Hold on to it. This is a plain Jane FCR ring, nothing special about it. You just need a 10 FCR on it. Stealth for the 25 FCR. Once again, lore, 
This is for your one to skills, which helps the sorcerers quite a bit, and your and for your lightning resist. Same prismatic amulet that we've been talking about all day. Ancient's pledge. You get Ral or Tal when you do the Qualcat quest in Act Five. Find a three socket shield. It's probably going to be a kite shield, and throw Ral or Tal in it, and you'll get forty eight to all res except cold, which is forty three. Great, great shield for playing through Nightmare and Parts of Hell. Boots, whatever you can find. These are the same boots I've been using all day. You can see I'm not wearing a second ring because it's not necessary in this build. The belt that I'm using in order to hit the 63 FCR breakpoint is a crafted caster belt. The recipe for this is any magic light belt, sharkskin belt, or vampire fang belt. Sharkskin belt. So find one, you can gamble for them, actually. The reason you don't want to use a light belt is because it doesn't give you four potion rows. Sharkskin and Vampire Fang will both give you four potion rows. The recipe is the belt, Ithrune, Perfect Amethyst, and any jewel. Any jewel. It can be a rare jewel, a facet if you want to do that, or of course a blue jewel. Your first Perfect Amethyst, I recommend reserving for a caster belt just to help you hit breakpoints. Everyone collects amethysts throughout the ladder so that they can make caster amulets. I recommend using your first one for a belt. It can roll between 5 and 10 FCR as well as other mods on it. Regenerate mana, plus to mana, things like that. Those are the guaranteed mods. I got lucky, and mine rolled 24 FHR, as well as some lightning resist. The point here is whatever you can find to build around 63 FCR is what you want for your sorceress. For skills, I always recommend one to warmth. Lightning skills, of course, you want static field, telekinesis, teleport. And then for cold, this is a basic blizzard build. I recommend getting cold mastery to 17 after your skill modifiers from your gear. 17 is so that you can reduce enemy cold resist by a full 100%. Cold mastery cannot break cold resist. Max blizzard and then start maxing its synergies. Very simple, very easy. Ice bolt, ice blast, and glacial spike. I recommend maxing ice bolt last because it's the least useful out of these three synergies. Glacial Spike is great because it's AoE freezing. Ice Blast is great because it freezes single target and does great single target damage. Ice Bolt is kind of useless, so I recommend maxing it last. I also recommend one point Frozen Armor. So this is just a basic Blizzard build. Now the reason you want to farm as a Blizzard Sorceress is because most of the minions directly surrounding Neolithac are going to be cold immune. Sometimes Neolithac will also spawn cold immune, but not all the time. If he's cold immune, go ahead and save and exit and make a new game because you're not going to be able to kill him. The reason it's important that his minions are cold immune is because if you just drop a Blizzard on Neolithac's head, it won't kill any of the minions which means there won't be any bodies for corpse explosion. But it can kill Neolithac, and it will kill Neolithac if you keep dropping a blizzard on his head. I'm going to demonstrate how I like to play this when farming Neolithac early ladder on a blizzard sork. Try to pick up very quickly if he's cold immune, and he's not. Teleport around the perimeter of the room. Keep dropping a blizzard on his head. He's dead. Oh, he's right here. He didn't drop anything. Teleport around the side of the room, drop Blizzard on his head. When he dies, hold Alt. If there's a key on the ground, then lure the minions away if you need to so that you can teleport in and get the key. It's very dangerous, very sketchy, and I recommend always having a portal open so that you can get back to town quickly if you need to. Or if you die, you can get back to your body relatively quickly. Don't have a mercenary. They're just going to get in your way. They're going to poke things, they're going to kill things, and then he's going to have a body to use Corpse Explosion on. Alright, let's talk Necro. Again, we're simulating that this character's level 70. He's level 89, so for level 70 he would need 80 stat points remaining and 19 skill points remaining, which is what I have here. So for stats, again, strength, strength and dex, enough to equip your gear, you're not going to need a lot. Everything into Vitality. For gear, here's what I recommend. Spirit Sword... Now you could make rune word white in a wand for the four to skeleton mastery, but I would only recommend that if you can find a good base for it. I didn't feel like vendor shopping a base that would be useful for something for this particular build, so I just went with the generic spirit. The FCR is helpful for casting corpse explosion anyway, just for hitting very basic breakpoints. The theme of this build is you want plus skills, which you cannot get very many with this gear, but it should work anyway. Spirit gives you plus two. Lore Helm, once again, gives you plus one. And then we have Smoke and Ancient's Pledge, both for resistances. Prismatic Amulet again. Same boots, same belt I've been using. 
basically guys use whatever gear you can find i recommend smoke and ancient's pledge lore and potentially a spirit that way you can have decent resistances some skill points as well i also recommend having a staff on swap that has teleport charges on it you can shop these from vendors as early as act two the reason you want this is to corral your minions it's a lot easier to get your skeletons under control if you have some form of teleport if you need to you can repair these in the cube using an ort rune and a chipped gem you can also just pay a vendor to repair them but of course that gets pricey another thing i forgot to talk about for the necro is your mercenary He's actually very important. What I recommend is getting a Might Merc, which is Act 2 Nightmare Offensive. The reason for the Might Merc is because it'll increase the damage of your skeleton significantly. The gear I recommend on him is very simple. Make an Insight. This is a very basic, low-level Insight, a Partisan. Try to get as high of a Meditation Aura as you can, but I understand you're not necessarily going to have Insight runes to keep re-rolling Insights first day of ladder so whatever you can come up with is great but the reason for this is simply because corpse explosion is a little bit mana hungry so the meditation aura will help out significantly make a smoke for him just to get his resistances up to max and if you can find some sort of helmet that gives him lifesteal you want that i just put a tell rasha's mask on him because they're very common they might not drop day one of ladder but they are extremely common and they're kind of a basic mercenary starter helmet Find whatever you can that has lifesteal and put it on your mercenary. Essentially, what I recommend is an insight if you can make one, a smoke if you can make one, and some sort of lifesteal helmet. You could also make a treachery for his armor. That might be a little bit more difficult to make day one of ladder, though. All right, now let's talk about the build. This is a very basic skeleton summon answer. First, we want a clay golem. He's our tank, right? One point in golem mastery. You're going to want some points in summon resist. I would dump into this when you don't have anywhere else to allocate your current points. You want to max raise skeleton and skeleton mastery. When I'm leveling this character, what I did was I just dumped one into this and then one into that and I just kept alternating back and forth like that. Eventually they'll both get maxed and that's what you want. You can use mages if you like. I don't really like them. They don't do, don't do a lot of damage. Really the reason most people use them is because they're a prerequisite for revive. Revive can be very nice, but for this particular purpose, I don't like them because they have a very short duration and I feel like I'm always resummoning them. I decided to just have a pure skeleton army. They're basically my meat shield. They keep me alive. Poison and bone skills. I opted to max corpse explosion. Neothak has his own corpse explosion and the way that you're going to survive and not allow him to cast his is basically by spamming your corpse explosion so that you use the corpses instead of him. The reason I maxed it is just so that it has a larger radius and it affects more things. Curses get about a 10 yard radius or so with amplified damage. The reason for that is because amplified damage is going to increase the physical portion of your corpse explosion. Remember, corpse explosion is half physical, half fire damage. When it's maxed, it's going to have about a 10 yard radius, so you want your amplified damage to be very similar. So get, a, get it to about a 10 yard radius or so. Everything that you have left over, you can choose to allocate wherever you want, whether you want mages or revives or you put more points in golem mastery what i chose to do was dump into summon resist that way my skeletons are a little bit more survivable when you're farming neolithak on a necromancer i honestly recommend not getting your halls of pain waypoint and the reason for that is because you can use the pindle area to farm skeletons very quickly you just come in here there's already corpses here you can summon your skeletons right here like this very easily and then you just come through, teleport if you need to, corral your minions, put amp damage on them, and start spamming corpse explosion. And then just run through the halls of anguish, into the halls of pain, and get to Neolithak as quickly as you can. Yes, it'll take a little bit longer if you don't get the waypoint, but you'll have a reliable source of getting your skeletons very easily, very quickly. The basic strategy here is to put down your amplified damage, allow your skeletons to get the kills, and then as soon as you see a corpse, start spamming corpse explosion. Because you have a large radius on your corpse explosion, and because you're playing on players one, it's not going to take that much to kill the minions. I recommend just spamming corpse explosion even before you see a corpse. That way, Neil Thack cannot get you with his. 
There he is, he's already dead. Unfortunately, he didn't drop a key, but he dived in the first couple seconds of Corpse Explosion. So there you have it. We talked about four builds that can farm Neolithak at the start of a ladder. A Cold Sork, a Death Sentry Assassin, a Hammerden, and a Summon Necro. The basic gist here, guys, is use the rune words available to you that you can make early on. Smoke or Stealth, depending on if you need Resistances or FCR. Spirit Sword, Lore Helmet, Ancient's Pledge, or Rhyme Shield. All of those items will serve you well and will fulfill the basic purpose of this build. For the rest of your gear, just use what you have. I shopped all of my gear, except for the rune words, from vendors and various acts. The prismatic amulet you can make in the cube. Yes, these kills were on players one, but that's what I'm expecting most of you to do at the beginning of a ladder. If you're playing on higher players count, then you're going to have other players there with you to support you. Maybe a conviction pally so that your corpse explosion does more damage. Maybe a barbarian with battle orders or something like that, right? And of course, for your other two keys, Summoner and Countess, they're not very difficult at all, and I don't even think they're really worth making a video over. Neolithak is the only one that can be problematic, and I just showed you four extremely budget, extremely basic builds that can farm him probably on the first day of a ladder without much trouble. Just a few things to look for. If he's cold resist on a Sork, save and exit. If the mobs that spawn down in the Halls of Pain are too much for you to handle, just save and exit. Don't be too proud to do that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. If you want, hit that subscribe button so you are notified when I make new videos. Be sure to leave a comment below and I'll answer it. If you want to see me on Twitch, my Twitch is twitch.tv beardly357. You can also join my Discord. The link is right here. Take care, guys. Keep growing those beards. Stay classy.